It's time for Animal Outlook's Vegan Family Podcast with your hosts, Eric C. Lindstrom and Cheryl Leahy. Welcome to this week's Vegan Family Podcast. Oh, the challenge of sending your little vegan to daycare or school or on a field trip with a packed lunch. Yep. And now in my case, also dealing with the school cafeteria food as our older vegan kid just started public school and kindergarten. Hey, you want to make sure it's one vegan, two healthy, and three something that they'll eat. That's right. Well, we've got some tips uh, as well as some resources that should help uh, with packing those lunches for your little vegans. So is, is this a challenge issue for you guys? Yeah, well, it's, it's becoming one. And so uh, to you know, go back in time a little bit, just about a year from now or, or you know, six months ago, uh, we had two uh, little ones still in a very nice daycare um, associated loosely with Cornell University here in, in Ithaca, New York. And um, they were very accommodating on a lot of fronts. But, um, you know, they were definitely the ones who we convinced uh, by going to their corporate headquarters that all of the kids in the school should be able, be able to enjoy non-dairy milks. As long as you're pushing carts around filled with gallons and gallons of cow's milk, why wouldn't you pick up you know, a gallon or two of non-dairy milk, not only for the vegan kids, but for the kids who are lactose intolerant? So uh, we made that happen. We also made sure that there was a vegan snack available every time they had a snack. Uh, meanwhile, we were still packing lunches for them to make sure that they had uh, the, the main part of their... their uh, lunchtime covered and then all of a sudden uh, our older our son went to uh kindergarten uh this year and um you again you can imagine a public school setting uh the school lunches are sort of they're improving without a doubt but they are sort of as cliche as we all remembered them to be the pizzas and the the chicken fingers and the soggy hamburgers that are wrapped in tin foil and so they're not the healthiest lunches, um, but more so, there's very few vegan options. And so we uh, we still are packing lunches for both kids. We're making sure that they're sent off in the morning with something that's uh, healthy and nutritious and that they'll eat uh, and is vegan, of course. But now we also um, are facing the fact that um, our boy can walk up to the lunch line and grab something that we don't know what he's grabbing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, and, it's funny because we talked about this a little bit in a previous yeah, yeah, episode yeah. about sort of how much they internalize, you know, their sort of vegan, how much they can police this for themselves. Yeah, I know, right. And it was funny because I know that my older one is really just so excited about being vegan and he just loves to kind of, you know, we used to, we used to call him a grandmother when he was like one because he always tried to feed everybody. Yep, and um, yep. and that's sort of still how he is. Like he really thinks about food and he really likes food. And the other one just isn't that into food. He was sort of a more typical like, you know, sort of kind of picky toddler. And now he's he's kind of growing out of that. But, he's you know, he'd rather be like playing with his Transformers or his Legos or right. Superman or whatever. And um, but then we were at a birthday party um, at a beach in December on um, over the weekend and I heard one other little three year old say to him, um, did you get a, a cupcake? There's oh, cap, there's yeah. r- red and there's blue and whatever. And, um, he's like, no, they're not vegan. We're vegan. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yes. Victory. I was like, Oh, I didn't know that you just like initiate these, these, co- these topics on your own without me. It's interesting. Again, uh, it's, that's, we find it easier to be at parties and to gatherings like that because we we come prepared you know we always have yeah. something with us but also the the kid the food isn't like uh it's not a lunchtime thing it's not sitting down in a cafeteria so a good example and this i kind of cringe just thinking about this and i actually have stopped asking him what he ate but we got a bill for uh extra milk oh my god and we're not yeah we're are you drinking milk at school cooper you're like yes you know it's not vegan, right? Oh, because he drinks milk at home oh, endlessly. Oh, yeah. He'll go through four or five cups a day of either soy or almond milk. And so what's he doing at school and how much do we police it and how much do we 
possibly make him feel awkward because he's standing in line with his friends and whether or not he wants to say, oh, I can't drink that, but I want it. So we're keeping an eye on it. And I think the main thing is, again, as always, um, you know, be prepared and, and send something that's that uh, is becomes the anchor of their lunchtime, hopefully. This is bringing up such an interesting topic for me because it's something that I kind of think about um, as I watch the kids engage with like what food is and even, you know, just cultural things like TV or books or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even like I remember like an Elmo book that was like, you know, have you ever had a pepper and pepperoni pizza? Elmo has. It's like, okay, gross Elmo. Like, (laughs) I know know. you're a puppet anyway. But, um, (laughs) but the idea of like, what is the sort of cultural archetypes around you know a healthy meal like what does that look like in people's mind and so i think what's so interesting about vegan food and you saying this thing about like well he drinks milk at home it's just soy milk and almond milk um is this this sort of i guess it's kind of a debate but it's really just sort of more i think of an issue for discussion where how much is there a responsibility for the vegan culture and the vegan market to sort of emulate what people already think of as kind of you know entrenched cultural foods sort yeah, of categorical yeah. requirements of having dairy this idea that people have that which is crazy we know that of oh. course that's crazy that we, it's just so absurd that we that we even do that um but i think uh you know this idea that like oh well they see you know this pizza well we have pizza too like we there's, there's tons I of know. pizza places around that have vegan cheese so you know the kids know oh like we have to ask for vegan cheese or if we go to a pizza place without vegan cheese we just have to throw without the cheese and they just you know that's pizza's part of their world but like that means when they go out in the world they have to know which things are you know the the norm is to have them be yeah. the animal version and which things are just vegan as is but it's so interesting because mm-hmm. like yeah well we have hot dogs too like I, there was actually a hilarious uh, this reminded me of a hilarious story about I was sitting at an airport recently and I had to like duck away um, and make a do a quick like couple of work emails and uh, I was wearing my California vegan shirt and there was it was like a Southwest you know they kind of like make jokes over the the intercom sometimes and they said something asking for a passenger you know sometimes they like tell passengers names like so and so come to the gate or uh-huh. whatever and um i they said this person's name like it was jello they're like <laughs> you know jello come to the gate and this and they said this other name that also sounded like food and i was like turned to the lady next to me was a stranger that's just like sort of like older woman and i was like these are jokes right like this <laughs> <laughs> It was her she, names. Yeah, and she was like, she was like, oh yeah, well, I'll have some jello, but she's like, oh sorry, you're vegan, because she saw my oh, shirt. Oh my gosh! Like yep. she was like, we were like joking about this guy making the joke, and that that brought up the same thought in my head. Like, and I said immediately, I was, well, we have vegan jello too. <laughs> like we right. have our own version of jello. You don't own jello. Yeah, yeah. So that that's exactly yeah. right. Like you don't own this. Like vegan kids need to feel like they can have some ownership and agency over like. You know, they can explore culture. They can go around and, you know, be part of these experiences. Um, but then that ha- it takes that extra step of understanding maybe the history of, you know, well, why do we even have vegan hot dogs? Well, because there was something that this is a counterpoint to something. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm not sure if you've seen them yet. And in fact, I grabbed a couple to make sure they came home with me and were duly recycled. But there are books out there uh, that are being circulated in the daycares and the school systems about, you know, one, one was titled protein and on the front cover was uh, salmon. And then you open it up and it's all different types of meat. Oh, man. Uh, there was another book cover, you know, titled dairy. And, it, and these are of course, you know, promoted by and supported from and, and uh, financed by, you know, big ag and, and dairy. And they're, they're just given to schools for free all over the place. Yep. Just have them sit in a, in a waiting area or have a teacher to pick it up or have it, go home with someone to say, oh, dairy is so good for you or whatever. So that's what ultimately, as you know, professionally, we're both up against every day is uh, changing mindsets, making things more available, uh, educating uh, everyone around us. So again, if, if I approach this elementary school to say, I understand that, you know, on the line, Cooper is, is possibly drinking, you know, a little 
whatever they were, quarts or no one says pint-sized milks. Mm-hmm. Um, what's it going to take for us to have as many soy milks available uh, that he'll need? You know, is it a matter of me buying it and putting it in the cooler? Because I'll do that. Right. You know, this is Cooper's milk, and then all of a sudden you're going to find out that, like I said, all of those kids who are uh, claiming to be lactose intolerant will suddenly have milk to drink. It, it'll open up a whole new uh, a bunch of opportunities for students who maybe didn't have it before. And then you work your way into vegan cheese for the taco day or for the pizza. And then you work your way into maybe some of the vegan um, meat substitutes, you know, like the, the soy curls or uh, the crumbles as part of other uh, recipes and other items that are being sold. So it's not a huge stretch. Granted, it may be, you know, sort of a budgetary stretch for some public schools, but I know there's a lot of, there's there's an incredible group, uh, the Coalition for Healthy School Foods that are making ginormous changes uh, in the school systems. uh, A lot, you know, a lot of which is happening in New York City and Brooklyn. Um, There's schools that are changing. There's an LA school right now that's all, Mm -hmm. has an all vegan menu. Um, You know, it's, it's, we're making progress and I really think it's a matter of just, as you were saying, uh, letting people know that we eat those foods. We just eat a different version of them. And that def- different version of them happens to be healthier. I mean, that's really obviously the upside. Yeah. And I, so I did... and there are some sort of bureaucratic, you know, yeah, messes so gosh, that yeah. I think you'll run into. One thing that I will say is there there are some very frustrating political forces that result, you know, cause the situation that we're in now, especially around things yeah. like, like yeah. dairy and cheap meat and things. Um, and, you know, there are some sort of constraints and, and issues that are, that the public schools are, are dealing with in terms of getting, yeah. getting food that's subsidized or free. Exactly. Um, yep. And you may be told something. I mean, I don't know. We have, we have not yet had to next year we go to public school but um, we have not yet had to encounter this directly. Um, but there are some good advocacy groups out there working on this and some good, um, COK has done some work trying to push more vegan options um, in schools as well. But uh, just one thing I will just say as a blanket thing is if you are told something by a school administrator about, oh, well, they have to have this or, or whatever, um, you know, don't just take that at face value. Yeah, you know, you yeah. can ask us and we can help you navigate it. But um, I think a lot of times when things sort of trickle down, the understanding gets muddled. And in reality, you know, of course, kids can eat vegan at school. So, you know. Yeah, well, part of what, you know, prompted us when we were having two in a daycare was that we recognize and realize that we were paying the same as every other family Mm -hmm. you know we were paying for two kids in this daycare and part of that payment that we're making to this daycare was to purchase non-vegan foods our money was being used to buy milk our money was being used to buy meat and cheeses and other you know snacks that include or uh, you know have meat and and, uh, dairy in them so that was the eye-opener for me it was like wait a second i'm paying the same so you either lower the amount we're paying because we're going to provide all snacks or you just make it equal for all the students to say there's a snack for everyone. And again, we are in a, in, in, obviously veganism has its own sort of stigma when, you know, when you stack it up against sort of a, a standard American diet, um, as would something like gluten free or people who are, uh, you know, nightshade free or whatever yeah. di- dietary restrictions you have. There's going to be a certain level of, of scrutiny, but still. Being able to accommodate, um, you know, the mass majority, being able to accommodate s- uh, simple requests, I don't think is a big stretch. Well, there's something um, really important to me about this money issue. And, you know, what I think sometimes we have to connect the dots for people. And this is putting my activist hat on again. Yeah. Um, you know, veganism at the end of the day is a boycott, right? It's not about, um, you know, necessarily personal purity or religion or spirituality or any of those things. And it's fine if people have those elements in it, but the yeah. function of veganism is to impact the supply and demand curves. So if, you know, this is not, this is why when people sort of uninitiated to this issue, will say, Oh, we'll just take the pepperoni off your pizza. And then vegans are like tearing their hair out. And they're like, yeah. why are you yep. mad? <laughs> and yep. you're like, because it's a boycott, right? Like, this is about voting with your dollars. Ultimately, it's about trying to impact the market. So when there's when 
in any dollars that come into my bank account are not going back out to, to support the industry. That's, that's what, you know, my number one yeah, responsibility yeah. is as a vegan, that's what veganism is. So, you know, when you're talking about a situation like that, where you're paying for food and the food costs is part of that, then that's not vegan, you know? And yeah. I think that's exactly where you have a great leg to stand on. And it sounds like that's what you did effectively to make yep. a strong argument. So, um, you know, I think, you know, and that's the same reason that I'll say, oh, well, you know, you don't worry. Like, yes, we're coming to your birthday party, but don't worry about providing food for us or bringing our own food. Because, in, you know, I know that's slightly more indirect, but but it's such an important issue to kind of make sure that we remember this is what this is about. It's about money yeah, at the end yeah. of the day. Why are they killing these animals? Because they're being paid to do it. So, yeah, yeah. right. Keeping it in focus. So, you know, all of that is is settings in which we're sort of, trusting others with our kids to a certain extent or trusting what's happening outside of the house. Um, I wanted to definitely mention, um, so I don't forget, uh, there are some incredible, obviously, online resources. Uh, I had mentioned the Coalition for Healthy School Foods. There's a lot of groups and organizations that would uh, definitely help in the school settings. But when we're packing our lunches, you know, let's get back to what we were setting out to talk about. When we're packing our lunches, um, what are we packing? And I wanted to point out that Instagram, uh, as you know, is a is an incredible photo sharing social media channel, and there are some amazing. Uh, I mentioned a couple in my book, um, amazing Instagram accounts where there are parents who are photographing in really great detail mm-hmm. the lunches, the vegan lunches that they're sending their kids off with. And so one of one that's in front of me right now is called Vegan Lunch Boxes. Mm-hmm. And if you go to Instagram and type in vegan lunchboxes, you'll see that every day uh, this parent will post a photo, you know, an overview photo to show uh, the little bag of of some kind of chips, some grapes on a skewer, strawberries and a sandwich, uh, mini bagels and some grapes and a mango. You know, it's these are beautiful, very colorful photos that, you know, I, I would hope your kid gets to school, pops the lid off or the teacher pops the lid off for them. And it's something that they want to eat. There's one here that's the vegan nuggets or the middle of the of the lunch box. So get these like little bento boxes yourself. Um, just pick them up at the store if they're plastic. We actually have some that are stainless steel with a plastic lid and put little, you know, compartmentalize things that you know your kids like. And you can instantly easily build a lunch that they'll eat that you know is vegan um, that's also healthy, so you don't have to worry about them. And there are so many options out there. There's so many things that are just go way beyond fruits and vegetables that you can pack in these uh, little lunch boxes for your kids. That that you know we actually we enjoy sending them off to school uh, knowing they've got those with them. Yeah, I think uh, it's funny that you mentioned Instagram and taking pictures because I started taking pictures of my kids' lunches that I was packing over the summer because. We used to go to like more of a part-time preschool that was a co-op. So I was like there sometimes and um, it was only half day. And then we switched to, um, you know, the, the whole week, uh, which is going to require me to pack lunches. So actually I bit the bullet and bought planet boxes, which I'd always thought were really cool. Um, but I thought they were too expensive and they are expensive. But I'm really glad <laughs> that I bought them. I know we're doing great product plug. Nobody asked us to do this plug, but this is my honest opinion. I love them. Yeah, yeah. They are, it's crazy that they're so expensive, but I love them. <laughs> um, so wait, what are they? So they're, are they're they like a, a bento yeah, box? It's a bento box, a stainless steel setup. They have a couple different options. I think the one we have is called the Rover. Um, I did not buy the bag that goes with it because there's a bag at Target that's cheaper um, that will fit them. Um, right. But uh, basically it has like, it comes with, uh, the, the box and then you can pick your magnets there's like different theme magnets like we have like oh, space yeah. and we have um under the sea and um the they have different compartments there's like a big compartment that would fit like a, a sandwich and then they have like a long and skinny one and then like two kind of rectangle ones on the side so there's four different spots you can use and then they have um they will they also give you like a little sauce cup with a lid and they give you like a little kind of soup up with a lid if you have anything that's like splashy like it's not uh liquid proof unless you put them in those little cups so um so what i tried to start i kind of started realizing i was doing was using that top long skinny part for fruit like always like some kind of fruit or i'll mix fruit in there or whatever 
even I'll throw frozen fruit. I mean, frozen fruit, like, you know, all the health vegans, like all the MDs and stuff who kind of look at this, always talk about berries being so good for you. Um, and berries are hard to keep fresh and they can be expensive. You buy them fresh, but they're amazing to buy frozen. Like, yeah. you know, you can get yeah. a ton for pretty cheap and you can get the organic ones. So, um, you know, whether it's fresh or frozen, we'll throw fruit in there. And then I usually try to do something green in one of the other two um, container like spots. And then, um, you know, whatever else that we have. So, you know, it could be like, like we made risotto for Thanksgiving time or like we had like, you know, we do sandwiches, we'll do sushi from the soji rushi yeah 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 you know, and, and have like you know whatever the things are that we want to throw in there and then um yeah i started taking pictures because i was like oh well i kind of know that i'm all excited because it's a novelty when i first started doing this over the summer and i want i was curious about whether my quality would start to decline <laughs> over uh-huh, time yep. <laughs> so i wanted the pictures to like have them but i have them i you know we can share them oh great um keeping a record but yeah and then it's funny because when we when we um send them to school with it, we always get compliments on them because people think they're really healthy and i think the, the nice thing about the bento boxes um and i definitely have this experience um with the planet boxes is that it's very easy to put really fresh food in there and so the yeah. difference between that and like just a you know a lunch box is like you're you know more tempted to throw just like a bag of chips or well, whatever in there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. The, the prepackaged items. And also, you know, with those boxes, and most kids are this way. Uh, I don't even remember when I outgrew it myself. But, you know, they don't want their food touching the other food. Like, oh, no, my, so, my you know, vegan yogurt got into my sandwich or something. And so by being able to separate them like that, it definitely makes it more palatable for them. Like, they're it's fun to eat. There's a lot of little... Little compartments. Yeah, that, that, you know, yeah. That's giving me a flashback to my little sister when I was a kid. She'd be like, "My food is touching my other food," yeah. <laughs> which actually my kids have never complained about. But it's funny because the we have a very different. Um, you know, one one of my kids is like really into food. He'll eat anything under the sun. Um, you know, as long as it's vegan, he's really into that. And mm-hmm. then the other the yep. other one, you know, I kind I mentioned he's he's sort of more typical, kind of gets sort of picky. He calls himself a ketchup monster. I think it's kind of gross <laughs> that he really that he eats his pasta with ketchup. Um, oh my gosh! But uh, <laughs> he's into that, whatever. Um, but uh, what I've noticed with the with the sending them to school with the lunches is one thing I'll do is even if I'm not sure he'll eat it, if it's something that I kind of want him to eat, I'll throw it in there. And he's more often than not will eat it. And now he pretty much eats it everything all the time, um, yeah. which he won't necessarily eat at home with me because he can, you know, I don't know. It's either like the social pressure of like it's lunchtime at school. It's like time to eat. Yeah, or yeah. it's like he can't just like roam around the kitchen looking for something else. Right. But he oh definitely has gotten a much more developed palate over the since starting school this year because he is eating a pretty much whatever I put in there, he'll eat it. Occasionally he'll be like, yeah, I don't you, want that, but rarely now. You mentioned frozen fruits, um, which again, you can stick them in one of these boxes frozen. And by the time lunch rolls yeah. around, they're defrosted and edible. Uh, we do the same thing with fruit, frozen vegetables. Um, we buy organic uh, broccoli florets, mm-hmm. and uh, they're still frozen, and you roll them or just toss them in a little bit, tiny bit of uh, sesame oil, the flavored sesame oil, and just a teeny tiny bit of sea salt. And it makes a, a really amazing, uh, savory uh, way to eat these little bit, bites of broccoli. And so by the time lunch rolls around, they're defrosted, and they'll eat the whole thing. Yeah. Again, I feel really lucky that... Um, you know, our kids are the ones who will eat broccoli. I mean, uh, our older one will eat anything. He literally will try it. I could just stick a spoon out in the air and he'll run over and yep. try whatever was on the spoon. The little one's a little pickier, but still she'll, she'll, she'll try anything I ask her to. And so they'll eat these entire lunches. And honestly, the fact that we're sending our kids off to, you know, school, uh, kindergarten or daycare um, with vegetables that they're eating I mean, right there is a huge home run. That's incredible to me, How, based on how I was raised. Yeah, it's funny because when I hear, like, the teachers say, oh, well, we love how, like, healthy the food is. And I'm like, what are the other kids eating? I don't know. I don't even. I know. I know. <laughs> like, I'm now so used to this. And, you know, they'll yeah. even just, like, straight, like, sometimes I'll just pour the, you know, corn out of the bag or frozen corn or whatever right in there because I make the lunches at night. And then by yeah. the time that they're at school, it's like, you know. 
and you know just steamed broccoli they'll eat that too so um i kind of lately have been thinking more like the less um you know additional like fat or salt to, to add and they'll still eat it like the better that's good you know yeah yep so I want to make sure I don't forget this time uh, to point people to tryveg.com because, as you know, we have uh, our food and lifestyle coach, uh, Jessica Carter, who is creating recipes at an incredible uh, pace. I'm amazed at what she's accomplished. And on the website, tryveg.com, there's uh, links under recipes to view all recipes. There's breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, and snack and soup recipes. And any one of these, I was just uh, scrolling through them as you were talking, but any one of these on their own um, could end up being uh, a meal, a dinner, a lunch uh, that could then also be sort of portioned out yeah. over time, you know, to be packed for lunch the next day. Uh, we just did that the other day with a soup I made. I made a cream of broccoli soup and it was uh, its base was a, a cashew cream that I made mm. and both kids loved it. And again, they're, they're sitting there just eating bowlfuls of broccoli. I mean, I feel so blessed that this is, you know, their diets and that, you know, when they finish their bowl at dinner, they're like, can we have this in our lunch tomorrow? And you're kind of like, uh, of course, like, is that a trick question? Yes, I'm going to send you to school with broccoli. So, yeah, we're lucky. And, and a, a resource like TriVeg.com and others online definitely will help uh, parents uh, with these uh, struggles that really aren't struggles. They're just things that you need to figure out. Visit TriVeg.com for inspiring and simple plant-based recipes your whole family will love. While there, download our free vegan starter guide. TriVeg.com. We've got vegans covered. Yeah, I'm glad you're mentioning the TriVeg recipes uh, because, you know, that sort of reminds me of, of what we do. We have this little kind of ritual that we have if we're not really busy on a Sunday, like most Sundays, we'll try to, I'll have the kids. It's usually the older one because he's more into food. Um, interesting, the younger one, and I'll let, I'll have him like clean off the table and stuff. He likes that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I'll have him just like look at the globe and like just pick a country. And then we make food from that country. Oh my and, gosh, that's fantastic. You know, we do a little like learning about the country on Wikipedia or whatever, but it's fairly light. It's mostly about the food. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we'll see the pictures. Like, we've learned some cool things. But, like, you, I just Google, like, vegan Cambodian, like, best vegan Cambodian or whatever it is. Um, and then, yeah, then the being able to have the little um, cup with the lid that goes in the bento box, then it's just leftovers. And that can, you know, that can be a couple days of the week's dinner. Yeah, um, and sometimes yeah. if I, you know, if we have time, we'll also do something similar where I get into, you know, more involved cooking, like on a Thursday. So even if I do involved cooking like twice a week, it kind of like stretches us plus having the rice yeah. and having like the more easy stuff that's still healthy during the week. It really kind of, kind of keeps the lunches interesting. And yeah, like looking at the tri veg recipes, or I was just saying today, all the um, recipe blogs are posting their best of 2018 recipes oh, so yeah. uh, that's we were just talking about that on the on the car ride this morning to school i said well maybe later today you know we'll pick something and we'll go to the grocery store and, and buy the stuff to make it and then of course that's gonna end up in the lunches tomorrow too you know i i want to point out but i don't want to stress too much but for new vegans or for people who feel that maybe uh even preparing meals is too much effort which i understand there are some people who just don't like to cook um there are prepackaged um, snacks that are vegan. Yeah. There's plenty of them out there. Um, you could put together a lunch. You know, it may not be as healthy as something that's homemade, but um, everything that um, you know, the classic, anything you can make, I can make vegan. Yeah. Um, if you sent a kid to school with a Lunchable, which of course is the notorious, uh, you know, uh, kids refrigerated pre-made lunch box, um, you can make a vegan Lunchable. Uh, very easily. Yeah. You can put together all of the same exact ingredients. It wouldn't even be expensive because kids aren't eating that much. I remember this story uh, about a, a, a school group and the parents were all holding their hands up to the teacher and, and the teacher's like, yeah, what, you know, what's your question? How come my, my kid's coming home with only having eaten half a sandwich? And then the teacher's like, just make them half a sandwich from now on. Like it's not rocket science. Yeah. Like they're gonna eat. They're gonna eat what they're gonna eat. 
you know, you can't force them to eat more. And so, We've you know, it's not, not talking problem. about putting... We always have the opposite Yeah, I know, problem. I know. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then again, they get home and they just never stop. It's a, it's like a, a running a diner I here. I know, I know. From like 5 till 7.30 every night to just keep feeding them and keep filling their, their milk cups and, and uh, giving them more snacks. But there's ways that you can put together um, sort of what would cons- be considered more standard lunches uh, and have them be vegan. Yeah, yeah. And and there's so many, I mean, you kind of have to think about like, what's your cooking style preference? What's your sort of food yeah, personality? Yeah. And there is so many ways now to incorporate that. I mean, tofurkey is amazing. Like, I know. you know, if, oh if you're gosh. like sort of the traditional, like, you know, lunch meat and cheese kind of white bread sandwich kind of person, you can do that vegan amazingly. And not just like, for your own vegan family, but you can kind of evangelize with that stuff. It's so good. I'm addicted to their bologna. Their bologna, thin sliced bologna is just through the roof. I love it. So yeah, there's definitely lots of options for parents. It's it's putting a little bit of effort into it. If you have any ideas or thoughts uh, on how to, to make the perfect lunch for your kid or for future episodes, things you want to hear, email us at veganfamily at podcast. Dot com. Cheryl, any parting thoughts or ideas for parents packing lunches? Well, I think the only other thing I would say is when you pack the lunches, uh, offer some to share. Oh, that's nice. Because we have gotten so many examples of people saying, oh, like I tried this because, you know, they brought it in and it was so good and yeah. now I'm buying it too. Right. My kid wants the tings. You know what tings oh, are, right? Yeah. The pirate's booty. Yeah. So now that's all they buy is tings, and that's the, the everyone's favorite snack. And you're realizing, wait a second, we just fed everybody these vegan Cheetos, and they don't care. The kids don't care. They love it. So, yes, buy extra, bring extra, make shareable amounts. Um, yeah, great episode as always. I hope we've given some people some guidance. As always, Cheryl, such a pleasure. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you for tuning in to Animal Outlook's Vegan Family Podcast. Have episode ideas or questions about going vegan? Email us at goveganatriveg.com. At